Esta conferencia comenzará a grabarse. Hello, good morning, everyone. Buenos días. Good morning, Antonio. Today here is Portugal is Dia de Liberdade <laughs> with Cinco de Abril. <laughs> okay. Congratulations. Yes. Enjoy it was for 46 anos de liberdade aqui in Portugal. <laughs> Felicidades. Good morning, Antonio and, and, and co-workers, colleagues. Yeah, good morning. Welcome, Alberto. Thank you. For your participation. I think it will be very, very good. Sure. Good morning, Karel. Uh, I, we cannot morning. hear you. Yeah, no, now, I, I, I think. Yeah, now, was now. Still muted. It's earlier. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> actually, it is. Buenos días, Carla. Bienvenida. Ah, I need to change here because Carla is also speaking, sorry. Morning, Carla, can you speak? Uh, just to tell us that everything is all right? Ask me, Carla Jimenez. Hi, Antonio. Hi, Carla. Buenos dias. Hola, Thank Iván. you. Hola. We will wait uh, just two minutes. All right. Thank you. Buen día, Vasco. Buen día a todos. Bonjour, Celine. So it's time to start. Um, I will quickly remember everyone, especially for those that are new, uh, more or less uh, what we want to follow as rules. So we divide the uh, session in three blocks. The first one should be around 20 minutes. Um, it's dedicated to share a uh, conceptual framework on the topic of the day. Today we are uh, focused on the going back to work and gradual measures. A little we will share needs and potential solutions in three in two different blocks uh, with trying to give the floor to uh, as much as, as possible. So the, the, the proposal is to be very quick and to the point in the in the interventions, okay? Uh, and as we try to be very punctual also, so um, welcome um, Alberto and Carla, uh, you are going to speak or uh, to share with us uh, what you have been doing and are developing in the field of uh, how to go in work, back to work, okay? Um, Carla, should I give you the presentation's rights or? Uh, yes, please, so I can share a, a couple of slides we prepared. Perfect. That's okay. <coughs> so I, now I will share my screen then. Okay. You had 20 minutes for the two of you. Okay. 20 minutes for, for Thea only? We were counting on 10. Uh, uh, one. One, 10 for one. So you are two. Okay, but if okay, uh, fantastic. you are shorter, better. Okay, can you see my screen now? Not yet. Not yet. All right. I'll I'll try and so what about now? No. Can you see my screen? Yes. Yes. Now we can okay. see. Okay. All right, then I'll start. 
Well, I'll, I'll will give you some context of what we have been doing so far in Theaga with regards to the COVID, and in particular with regards to our sector protocol we have put together. And then I will hand it over to, to Alberto to give you the more sp uh, strategic uh, point of view. So what we have done so far, starting on the 10th of March, we created a, a group, uh, a commission uh, with, in the context of the crisis. And little by little, some people from the were joining it. Um, currently, we have around 120 people involved in a regular basis. And they belong to around 80 companies I have calculated more or less from the cluster. So these are people from different backgrounds. There are people from HR, there are general managers, there are people from health and safety area, but they are all concerned uh, and, and in, 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 involved in, in the in the initiatives we're taking with regards to the COVID. Uh, what we do with them is since the 10th of March, we are holding uh, regular calls. In the beginning, all almost until last week, we we're holding these calls in a bi-weekly basis. Every Tuesday and Thursday, we were having a, a short meeting just to put things in, co in common, last, just to see how they were doing with regards to their regulations of their employees or to health and safety or so on and so forth. Anything having to do with the, co the, with the, co the coronavirus. Normally, in this course, we have average. Sometimes we have more, but normally we have around 50 people participating from different companies. Um, we we cover, as I say, different different topics during the calls. As the situation evolved, and we were involving in these calls experts. So sometimes we have in these calls, for instance, a, a lawyer a lawyer specializing in labor, because this is a big concern, obviously, to our companies. They are making redundant. I don't know how to say it in English, but all these uh, um, circumstances with their, they get the make people redundant and they co they will come back eventually in one month time so we they have a lot of questions about this so we involve this this lawyer in a regular basis we also have had a health and safety at work a regional representative to kind of advise a, a companies who have they have to do to bring back their a workers in, in, in uh, at working when, when the situation uh, comes back to normality if that's a possibility and we will have uh, this week, uh, um, some representatives from the mutual insurance companies, because there are many concerns about how to handle people, especially vulnerable. They don't know how to handle those situations. So we have an expert in this area next Tuesday. Eventually. So uh, we have been doing this, as I said, this, this is a general a group of people working in the in the COVID. And, and what we have done as the situation evolved, we have created uh, subcommissions to tackle the different aspects of the of the crisis. So, for instance, we are working in creating our our own protection systems, given the situation in the market, and trying to avoid uh, hazard for the for the health and uh, system. So, we are trying to create our own mask. We are trying also to produce the hydro call. So, we are involving companies with the capabilities and the skills to do so. So, we have created sub commissions for hydro call. We have created a sub commission for masks. We have created a subcommission, very active actually, for EPIS purchasing, uh, both uh, in the external market as well as in the uh, local market. And we have created a COVID protocol commission, which I will cover in the next slide, so that's why I highlighted. And also, even though this is something that is not urgent, but eventually will, will become important, we are thinking, starting to think about how to train the employees. This is uh, this is something that we, Concern us. And now we have to think how we train the employees in the current environment. We have to change the methodology. We have to change the topics. There are some urgent things now. So we're working closely with uh, people from the companies to see how from Seaga and also uh, for them to to be able to train the the automotive workers in the in the medium term, long term, thinking of probably at the mid end of of this year. Uh, for us, it has been very helpful to use Teams as the platform. We, uh, you use it for the train, for the meetings. We use it to store and, and share documentation. We have created several different folders with all the relevant information for the companies that they can access there, and they can also they can also themselves share documents with with other companies, and they're actually doing it. Uh, we also have a chat, so they ha don't have to wait for the regular calls to communicate and share. And give insights or ask questions to other 
companies from the cluster and basically that's, that's, that's what we use it for teams. What I'm going to do now is cover um, the protocol bits. If you have any question, maybe you can, we can do it at the end. I don't know how you normally handle this, Antonio. But this is just an overview of what we're doing. Uh, when I mentioned this is six commission, there's another one, COVID exit, which I will I will let uh, Alberto talk about this more strategic uh, point of view, I'm focusing on the operational bit. With regards to the protocol, uh, we have um, a proposed, basically, we, we want to give all our companies an homogeneous baseline uh, with regards to, to how to handle the security of their workers when they go back to work. Uh, for, us, it, for us, it was much, much more important to have an agree upon um, protocol than, have, than having a perfect protocol. Uh, first of all, the focus obviously is in the, in the health uh, of the workers and the COVID contention, but you also wanted to have something to give some peace of mind or to the labor unions to have their acceptance because we know that when we work, we want to work. If a company, for instance, PSA, which is the big one, which is the, the factor of the sector, has certain protocols, and some others don't follow more or less the same protocols, we're going to have a problem because everybody wants to have the minimal level of, of security uh, ensured. So for us, it was very, very important to have a protocol as a reference that uh, every company could use as a baseline. So what we did. We took the PSA protocol. They have created, obviously, they have a lot of experience because they have a company in Wuhan. So they, were, they are like two weeks ahead of us or, or more in, in terms of uh, health and safety in the workplace. So they created their own protocol with their headquarters in, in France. And they said with us, what we did is uh, review this protocol together with the authorities, um, health and safety at work authorities in, in the region. They gave us some advice and say, well, we do you should change this or you should change that, you should add this or that. Once we had this uh, document re re revised with um, with these authorities, we share again with the companies. We add to it some um, of their contributions because every company is different. We have like a very variety heterogeneous eco ecosystem. So what we what we did is once it was validated by BSA by the companies and by this authority I mentioned, we, we send it to all the companies, say, there you are, you can use it as a basis, you can use it as your protocol as such as it is, or you can take parts of it. But you have to know that this is the protocol that is agreed across the cluster and is, and is validated uh, by the authorities. When I say validated in practice, because, well, it's, it's the, um, the ministry who has the authority to validate. So they basically say, OK, this is, a, is according to the to the ministry uh, specifications, and you are fine with it. So we update it regularly. Uh, so the companies know that they what they have is is, is a, a updated protocol. Uh, well, as, as I mentioned before, which was raised in the PSA protocol. Um, what we did, because as I say, we have very different companies, and we have companies from 5, 000, with 5,000 employees and we have others with 10 or 20 very small businesses. So not everything applies uh, the same way to everybody. So what we did in the document to make it user-friendly uh, user and easy, easy to interpret was to include a symbols code across the document. For instance, everything that the authorities say is, is, is mandatory, we, we put this, this symbol so they know that they have to have this as a must. For instance, the distance or the protective individual protection system that I have to use when it's mandatory we put this symbol so the company they know that it doesn't matter if you are PSA or a big company or a small company you have to do this to protect your employees we include another symbol which is this one which is okay you have to do this if applicable for instance in the protocol they mention uh, the canteen well very few companies have a canteen but those that have a canteen might must follow certain measures and last, we included the symbol because we, we included in the protocol certain measures that some company took, but well, they are nice to have. You can do it fine, but it's not mandatory. So it's just kind of a suggestion. So basically, this is more or less how we we organize and, and define our protocol. Uh, as I say, it's not perfect, but it's our protocol. I mean, it's, it's something that is agreed uh, across the companies. And this was very well received by by the companies and by also by the regional government 
having this uh, in place. So for my side, this is it. I, I give it. Uh, I hand it over to to Alberto to to add and, and complete with whoever whatever he wants. But you can go, take back the the control of the screen, Antonio, if you want. And if you have any questions, obviously I'm happy to to respond. Thank you. Thank you very much, Carla. Um, wonderful. Uh, Alberto, do you want to take the control of the screen or? No, it's okay. I, I, can, I just want to, to share some ideas with, with, with you to reflect and, uh, and to think, just to leave them for also for, for the European Commission. And well, just, uh, just to, to, uh, to change ideas with, with you. Okay, so, perfect. Go on. Okay. So the, 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 first, the first idea for me that is, is also is, is very, very important to say that industry is is a little uh, jewel, a little gem that we have in, in Spain and we have in, in, in Europe, of course. So uh, nowadays, everyth everybody is thinking about uh, healthcare. Uh, everybody, uh, of course, it, it has to be. Um, in Spain, everybody is also thinking about how to recover tourism. Tourism is, is quite important for, for, for our economy. So. I, I, I am reading about uh, beach, the beaches uh, in Spain, uh, uh, a way to, to think in, in, in how to be uh, COVID free, like uh, the, uh, well, how to recover tourism through our sunny uh, uh, weather and through the, through the beaches and everything. So for me, uh, idea number one, so industry is extremely, extremely important. It's a little gem, a little jewel. And without industry, we don't have uh, research, we don't have development, and we don't have innovation. Of, of, of we have them, uh, they, they, are, they are not, uh, they are not, um, I don't know, profitable. I mean, they are not. It's a waste of time. That's what I think. So idea number two is uh, we have to recover trust. This, this is very, very, very important. So um, uh, for automotive industry, we need, um, we, are, we are listening every day how to get back to work for, for manufacturers, for car makers, and also for component manufacturers. This is very, very important, but we need also demand. So. So we need the, the car dealers to open at the same time that uh, car makers and, and dealers uh, open the, the, the shops. So this is very important, but we have to work together. We have to, to, to be at the same time. And the most important to do that is to recover trust. So my coworker, Carla, is playing how to do it in a, in a, in a in a safety in a in a safety environment, which is very important, uh, we need employees and, and and we need customers of of the dealers, uh, and we need uh, I mean everybody, uh, workers and everybody to be to be safe. So we need protocols and, and everything has to be fine. So we need uh, elements of protection and, and according to my opinion, everything is ready. But uh, my proposal, my, my idea is that maybe we, we, we need um, a certification, like, like, um, like you know, that uh, for maybe you are familiar with the, the, the sunny beaches of Spain, there is like a, well, I think it's in Europe, uh, we have a blue flag. So, so if you see a blue flag, uh, you, are, you, you can f feel confident about the quality of the water and that everything is fine. So, so what I am asking for is like an ISO certification or maybe a blue flag or a, a COVID-free label that could be, could be um, uh, European that could um, introduce a confident and trust in the system for employees, for, for workers, for customers, for everybody. So well, I am asking for a COVID free label for industry. So uh, I would like to add also the, um, something that, that I consider that is very, very, very important. I, I talked to Antonio many times and uh, well, he's uh, 
speaking to me the, how many actions you are performing and and something that is very called is, is called rapid rapid response antonio or rapid uh, rapid alert function yes rapid for, alert function yes rapid alert so, so that that's, that's exactly what i think so we are in a rapid alert to um to protect business continuity so this is very very important for, for my way of, of thinking we, we we have spent 70 years to create so many important uh, smes for the industry and um, uh, they are extremely extremely important for our value chains um, and we, we 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 cannot uh, we cannot lose them so uh, in spain for instance and maybe in europe because we are many social we are listening um, quite often about uh, um, a sentence that is like something like basic minimum income for people I totally agree with with with, with that and uh, maybe it's needed but what about a basic minimum income for SMEs they are not uh, guilty about the uh, COVID um, and we are listening a lot about liquidity have to increase liquidity and increase money cash for, for the companies but the, the, they have interest and, and you have to get back the get back uh, the, the 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 cash received from 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 authorities so in this case what i think is that um, especially for for those uh, for those companies smes that are extremely and strategical strategical um, import of, of extremely and strategic importance i mean we need to protect them so i i, I am requesting or asking for a basic minimum income for small and medium uh, uh, companies and finally to to the last idea to reflect and to think is that uh, of course it's a question of speed so um, every minute i mean every day every week that we are not working the income is zero and the costs are a lot are a lot so in spain for instance we are paying 70 percent 70 70 percent of the bill of the electricity without a production so because you you pay for the 70 percent of the of the bill is, is paid on, on the basis of of um, power uh, of, of the power av availability so maybe you're not producing anything and you're paying 70 percent of the of the of the bills uh, of course of the taxes and uh, many things so your your revenues are zero and your expenses are, are quite high quite uh, high so uh, we have to act uh, fast so that's my last idea my my, my last uh, reflection and so thank you for the opportunity to to be to be with you this morning you are very very welcome alberto and i i think that your proposals are very concrete very clear and that's what we need this kind of proposals to discuss so thank you and now is the time to go to the next block that is about needs alberto has just declared uh, some needs will you add some to the situation related to the going back to work and the measures good morning uh, everybody uh Dulos from cluster map speaking uh I, I don't know if you mentioned i, I arrived late sorry and this week has been a nightmare to connect but i think that one need maybe is missing to go back to work is then how we can uh recover treat and uh, make the, co the contamination of the protection equipment that the people are using uh, because we will use a lot a lot a lot of numbers of ppe and i don't know if it is uh, in the point also think about how we can manage all this waste in a safety way that can also uh, be related to the trust uh, in the safety environment that's totally right. Yeah, very, very important. 
Do you have proposal? Uh, we will, well, sorry, I jump into solutions. But I am curious because I know that you are working on it. Okay, more needs. Or comments. Good morning. I'd like to ask a question to um, to Alberto. Um, when you uh, are um, suggesting this uh, flag for COVID-free companies, um, what, are you thinking about something that costs money? Because small companies maybe now are worse than ever in terms of paying <laughs> for that. Good, good, good question. Uh, in my opinion, I mean, big companies, they don't, uh, they don't need uh, anything. Of course, they, they have needs, but I mean, they, they have the means to, 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 to buy. I mean, protection equipment. They have uh, means to get uh, cash. So they, they, they have uh, almost everything. So in the big companies they, they, they can they can pay for a certification for a for a flag or, or a covid free label uh, it's not a matter of, of money i mean they, they well they, they do what they, what they are they are asked ask to do at least in the in the automotive industry well, regarding is i think uh, yes yes you, they, they have to be free i mean maybe uh, the government and authorities they, they, they should help them with everything with with the protection equipment equipment with the um, with the um, well uh, carla my co-worker explained the protocol they need help to implement all the measures uh, of the protocol and it would, it would be a good a good um, in my opinion it would be a good idea to help them to 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 get the label and to to communicate uh, trust in the, they are uh, fulfilling all the requirements to be COVID free. And in this case, for me, I mean the uh, governments and they, they should pay for for, for for everything for small and medium enterprises. This, this is my humble opinion. Thank you Antonio? very much. Antonio. Okay. But uh, the first, Celine, because she has uh, raised the hand before. Yes, thank you, thank you for um, uh, Carla and Alberto. And uh, w w what I see for the needs, it's a combination of different things. First, there are new needs for different products and specifically uh, the autonomy of, the, of Europe for basic products and uh, well, new need of products like masks and uh, other things like that. But the the autonomy is important, so there is a need for reindustrialization of many many goods. Uh, this is the first one. Second, uh, uh, there is the the need of the uh, the resilience of each firm. So we see that the firms are very uh, vulnerable of uh, this kind of crisis and so how the firms can find the resilience in uh, in this context uh, able to adapt to different products and the third one is the uh, green plan uh, to move toward a more sustainable uh, society and so how uh, to um, also to follow in the in the same time the, uh, the the green uh, perspective uh, in this way. So these three elements have to be combined. So the the, the needs uh, uh, and the, the autonomy of the needs for Europe, the uh, uh, resilience of firm and the, the green uh, perspective. So there is a big issue in the combination of these three uh, issues and the also the coordination in terms of uh, governance a multi-level governance between uh, europe uh, states regions and so on and that's it oh thank you Celine. Uh, somebody could add to that to those needs the need to combine also digitalization 
about digital transformation, but yeah, totally. Thank you. Uh, Pasco. Yeah, yes, um, I have uh, I have uh, a few points that a uh, person from Bosch sent me. It's just a, a set of bullets. Some of them are very practical. Uh, I don't know if uh, you allow me to read them or I yes. can uh, just uh, send them to everybody, but uh, I, I can I can read them. So um, one thing that I, they are going to do is that everybody um, will be the temperature of everybody will be measured at the entrance, and um, <clears throat> so they also created um, a room for. Um, to put uh, um, people with some uh, suspicion of um, COVID. They request the, to keep social distance at all the times. The employees should use uh, respiratory masks. They have already um, a leaflet uh, to, um, to help the people to put correctly the mask and to use it. They are reducing the capacity of the rooms by half. Um, so uh, using a kind of a W mechanism, so nobody is in front of uh, uh, any person and uh, nobody has uh, someone near him. Um, also, this applies to the canteens. Uh, is something also in the bars. Uh, at this moment, they uh, eliminate everything that could be pickable, means salads, and uh, so all the plates are served complete, and there is no uh, cold food served as in the past. Um, rooms uh, with control access doors, they are, they are permanently open during work time, so nobody uh, touch uh, the doors. Um, they have dispensers for um, uh, to dis disinfect hands through all the, the facility. They have also a direct line for the for the medical installations. So anybody can, uh, if if there is a problem, they can reach the the, the medical support. Also, they, they create a, a computer screen saver with instructions on, group, on good practices. So everybody that has a, a computer, they can see all the time when they are not uh, working um, instructions. Also, they have for, for, the, for the workers, they have a cleaning kit available in Every every zones of work. Um, shift time period change in order to avoid shift crossing. So people arriving and uh, leaving they don't cross uh, during this uh, um, this uh, mechanism. Common tools um, they are um, disinfected before each uh, group uh, start to work. And also, uh, they do that to common IT devices, uh, for instance, uh, printers and, and so on. And also, for the people that is visiting um, the installations, they have also kits available in each office. They limit the, the number of people in the meetings to five, and um, if possible, to use the, the virtual uh, tools. Um, workplaces are at least separated by the two meters and uh, they change also the, lay the layout of the rooms and the plant uh, if possible in order to implement this. All the shared equipment um, are disinfected including cars and uh, they have uh, strong reminders on equipments that are um, that are used by quite a lot of people, for instance, printers, coffee machines, uh, and so on. And uh, they don't allow trips or voyage 
unless in very urgent and critical cases. So this is a set of um, orientations. I can uh, send this to you if you want in order to share among everybody. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Vasco. Thank you. Very excellent. Vasco, uh, uh, Vasco, this is Alberto from Teaga. One question. This is for Bosch uh, Braga, the manufacturing plant of... of no, the I, I think oh. these uh, rules are for all the departments of all the installations in Braga, but uh, in Portugal... Uh, uh, everywhere, ones, everywhere, right? Yes, these ones were sent by, uh, by a department from uh, Aveiro, but I can share with this. They even mention um, an equipment, a Bosch, equipment that is used to 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 see the the the, L, the if the people is healthy or not we have i think a problem in portugal because when we talk about measure, measuring the temperature of the people it, it seems that only doctors can do that so it's not uh, something that uh, can be implemented easily but uh, that's life but I can share with uh, with you if you want. I can send this. Thank you. Perfect. Jamie. Okay, Antonio. Very, very quickly, uh, I'd like to make a question to Alberto. Uh, in the past, uh, I went several times to PACM in the in the vehicle, and I know that the the chain of supplying between all the components that are in Galicia. And even in Portugal and in um, PSM, usually uh, work well. Now with this coronavirus, the things are going on well, or there is a need to try to establish a new kind of uh, supplying for the PSA factory. I, I don't know if I if I understood well. You are asking me about the situation of PSA, PSA, and also if if you, if we expect uh, changes in the value chain. That's right. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So, well, uh, a difficult question. So, a PSA Vigo is, is, is going well. well uh, we expect, um, uh, even with the with the COVID uh, crisis, we expect to have the same volume of, of, of last year, 2019. So, we expect uh, the, the same. Uh, a little bit more of 400,000 cars per year, but if you compare it with the with the budget, the budget uh, is a total disaster. I mean, we we were expecting 600,000 cars this year in bill. Um, um, we are going to make 400,000, so uh, we expect a, a decrease of of uh, of 200,000 cars per year. So it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a disaster, it's a very difficult situation, and this is not our worst uh, case uh, scenario. So for, for me, it's, it's very, very important to, to recover as soon as possible trust. Trust in, in dealers, as, as I said, in customers, and also trust in, well, in, in, the, in, the, in the, all the, the society. To, to well, as you as you know, uh, the car, car is is the second most important investment for a family or for a company after after uh, after living. So this is very very important to to increase trust as soon as possible and to recover normality and to create the the as the safety zone. Uh, I say the, the safety song and uh, safety I mean mindset for everybody to well to it is very important I mean uh, economy as you as you know is a is a is a mindset so it is very, it's very important to 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 be uh, well to be uh, to to feel trust as soon as possible so in our worst scenarios not just for for big also for Spain and for Europe is a de our worst scenario is a decrease of 40%, 40% of, 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 of sales and of, of production. So this is this is quite uh, it's, it's even worse than our last crisis. So and it, it's concentrated in, in in a period in a very short period of six months, 
that goes from March to maybe to August. So it's, it could be a, a period of, of zero income. So this is very, very difficult uh, uh, situation. So mortality of, 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 of companies uh, should be put uh, at, 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 at first in our scale of, of, of problems. Thank you, Alberto. Karel. A uh, very simple question. What, um, do you think that a cluster uh, can play a role in the design of these rule books, protocols, or is it always on the company level uh, done? Oh, this, question is for, this question is for Carla. So you're asking if the, if, the, if the cluster can play a role in the definition of the protocols? Yeah, exactly, because I see many general rules that are somehow applicable in, in every firm. And then I see some very specific rules for manufacturing, for example. But in the end, it's quite similar. So I was wondering if every company needs to do the effort to design it for themselves. Can there be some scaling gains by developing such rule books more on a an, an higher aggregated level or, for example, uh, at a cluster level or even uh, uh, national level and probably some governments are already doing that. I know that in, in Belgium the government is providing some guidance but not obligatory so I was trying to measure which level is more appropriate yes. for what kind of guidance. Well, I, I, I can tell you about our case. In our case in, in the automotive industry in, in Spain uh, the big, the big um, how do you say patronal, Alberto in English, I don't know, uh, the big no, representative... Sorry. Eh? Sorry? I know. Uh, business associations. Okay. Business associations. Okay, they, they, they created a protocol at, at the national level. The car manufacturers, the component industry, and the car sellers. They created the protocol. They agree on that. So they share it. And, and, and but we we found some resistance at a regional level. Some uh, trade unions are not happy with it. So we thought that we should work more at a local level, and so that's what we did. And we say, okay, you have this national protocol and it's there for you to use. But the companies, they have to decide. For instance, the small companies were very happy with a protocol at a local level. They don't have to adapt anything or they don't have to create anything from scratch. They, they just have that and they can use it. When you talk about more bigger companies, they normally belong to groups. So they, they have to find a mix. <laughs> it's not easy between what your group says and what your client at the regional level says. Because maybe, for instance, Ventella, they have their own protocol and they can apply it in Germany, in France, and so on and so forth. And when they come to Vigo, PSA will ask them to handle the components in a particular way. So it doesn't matter how is it defined in, in Germany. If you, you don't act according to what PSA has, ha, says, you have a problem. So the bigger companies, the tier one, the, the level one provider to, to, the, to the big one, they have to kind of adhere and try to adjust the protocol to the, to the big ones. When you go to more to a smaller level, you, you are more free to do so. But if you want to be safe, you want to make sure that you are doing the right thing, and if you want to make sure that your unions are going to be happy, it's better to adhere to something that is done at a cluster level. So that's what we did. And we also refer always, always, always to the authorities. So we don't include in that protocol anything that has not been um, approved by the, by the authorities. And we always refer to that. And we went and when we added the protocol, we go back to these authorities and ask, what are thinking including this? What do you think about it? Do you, will you approve or will you not? We, we, we are in a safe place, kind of. So we know the big companies are not maybe going to use the protocol as such as it is. But the small ones probably using them 90% or 80%. So I don't know if I answer your question. Very much. Actually, I can summarize it at three basic indicators are important and that's the size of the company the sector and uh, also the territory where you're uh, acting so that makes it even more difficult but it's very clear your answer thank you you're welcome uh, Kala, when you say local you mean regional in your case no yes 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 I mean, sorry i mean regional yes mm -hmm. yeah, that's what i understood perfect thank you perfect uh, daniel Daniel González, I, I think that you were... Hi. Yeah. Yes, I wanted to ask um, 
uh, Vasco to pass the text that he just read aloud. So actually he was quick enough to read my message in the chat and I already have it. So it was really, really <laughs> quick because uh, I think it's very important for, for us to, to start looking into what's happening. So it's pretty Thank useful. You. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. I would like to add a comment. Uh, also in Italy, uh, uh, we have the uh, the sectoral dimension. I mean, the starting point from the National Business Association that set uh, and is working uh, uh, on the protocols, and then the, the 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 regional one, the regional dimension, as uh, also Carla just said before. But I can say that we also have uh, the value chain. Uh, um, point of view that is uh, for sure regional in the context of the dimension where clusters act but uh, can be not only sectoral but also cross-sectoral so there is a, a, an adding point of view that i would like to put thank you Ilaria. So we are speaking now about solutions. Uh, um, I am curious, um, Dolores, do you have solutions for what you were um, stating as need before? Well, I have an idea <laughs> uh, as a solution, uh, and I'm trying to work in on 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 it. Um, but I think that uh, we need to include the uh, waste management system for the population, for the mask and epis. And I read some bibliography and I know that uh, the containers, safety containers that are used in hospital and sanitary uh, centers are done with uh, polypropy uh, polypropylene and uh, there has a design, a specific design. So I think that could be possible to to extract uh, this design and make bigger containers in way that maybe in each uh, in each uh, village or in each city or, or several in cities I don't know this is uh, it's a more complex it needs really to be well designed but can be fabricated and then also um, I'm trying to contact with the company that are doing washing machines but with a very specified washing machines for industrial pur pur purpose. So I would like to ask them if uh, they have these washing machines, but a small ones, or, or it depends on the capacity, but can I sterilize. So in this way, it will be possible to collect all this waste in one big container safety, and then make the, um, the, the transport of the logistics to this kind of systems that can sterilize the mask. And then it's really necessary to complete the recycling and recovering, but at least will be safety uh there you will not be contaminants or on the mask this is my idea that i start working on it um but up to now it's uh, on the paper and with contacts uh i would like to 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 propose that uh, here in catalonia there is the uh i don't know recycling agency we can say waste recycling agency i would like to talk with them to try to propose the idea and try to implement together because it's quite um, quite ambitious. But I think that it's really, really necessary. I would like also add another point that is, has been mentioned about the, um, the safety environment in the, in the companies, uh, that we need to take in account that are not closed systems, are open systems. I mean, the employees go in, maybe go safety one day, go back, but the next day can be, can be uh, contaminated because uh, we interact uh, with other with other companies we are open systems uh, and also one solution that can be interesting i don't know if someone uh, is uh, is thinking about is just um just implement like a button uh, uh, a red button completely anonymous but when for example if i am i employee and when i i know that i am contaminated i can inform anonymously to the company so in this case, the company is alert that one case or two cases or three cases can appear in in his plans, and 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 maybe if there are quite a lot, means that probably a focus is in the plant, or maybe no, it's just isolated case that come from outside and just informed to the company and can be really controlled and can be really disinfected. 
I don't know uh, if I answer you. Yeah, yeah. In that case, is I think that is where the um, uh, tracking application on the mobile phones are important. Yeah, I know that yeah. there is a problem with the anonymity of the data, but if you are using one of those applications, you are able to track with whom have you been working, and if you are uh, press the red button, uh, it will be far easier to control who is in danger because uh, they were. This should be this should be the perfect, but in the case that okay for privacy data or whatever, at least just know it that you have someone in the plan is already important to know. Totally agree. Karel. Um, yeah, I, I don't know how this works for within a company, but I think that uh, the privacy uh, matters is less strict for within a company, company because it's a restricted area because many companies are already working with some kind of tracking device, but I'm, I'm not the expert. And another thing I wanted to highlight um, is um, that many people are now, uh, not many, but a few people are now trying to find solutions for the disinfection of material place-based so that you don't need to send it somewhere or just throw it away. Um, if you like, I can bring somebody in who is uh, designing a, a, a sort of a station that can be implemented in hospitals to disinfection of uh, clothes, so specific textiles. So you have disinfection equipment for um, tools, etc., that exists already for ages, but now specifically for protective gear and uh, not gear, but clothes, textiles. Um, but this would also be interesting for example, at the company level, not only within hospitals. Um, yeah, this is you're very... right, Carol. But my Excuse point is not from the hospital point of view. My 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 worry is about the population. Outside the company and outside the hospital. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Here is uh, my also worry. also also in the companies, no? I think, or yeah, in the schools, in the schools, yeah. in the schools the for schools. example, yeah. or or on the uh, on the for for the elder people. No, in the I don't know how they are called the shelter for elder people. But beyond but the hospitals, I, I know that in the hospital there are already solutions and uh, systems that are. Uh, the, I mean, I know that the systems for for hospitals and sanitary centers is is, is recovered and it's it's perfect. I just make the extension to the rest of the society. But to have experts on that uh, kind of technology, I think it will be very helpful. No will be great okay yeah, Karel is i think a, a lot of innovation can can be done on that type of thing also in the general uh, um, yeah operation of a hospital or whatever because nowadays many of the equipment is just used once and throw away which is which is also from a circular and ecologic point of view not really a, a sustainable way of dealing with it so only from that point of view it would be good to to go back because I think 20, 30 years, people in, in hospitals were used to always um, have these um, aluminium or inox uh, type of gears, and now it's just replaced by plastic that they throw immediately away. So uh, maybe a return to the to, to the old fashion, if it's safe, might be uh, way more uh, promising for, for ecology as well. And maybe that's a good thing from this crisis, uh, but let's see. But anyhow, if you if you like, I can bring in this, this, this lady who is doing uh, research on this specific textile that you can reuse and that can be washed place-based with wash station. So that might, I think it might be also interesting for, for companies that sell themselves if they have a, a type of scale um, to handle that. Yeah, thank you. It will be great. It will be great. Thank you. So should we so just one moment? Just one moment. Should we organize a specific session or just to put you all in contact and and what do you think? Should we organize a specific session on recycling and sterilizing of the materials or? I think so, Antonio. Uh, we we start to see those materials at the street, were flying with the wind, and that's a very dangerous thing. Also on yes. the sea, I, it's it's really dangerous. So yeah, a special session would be welcome, I think. Okay. I, totally I do not volunteer. <laughs> yes, I agree as well. Uh, the 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 synergy with the circular economy is really important now. 
uh, I have another worry that I didn't remember when we were speaking about needs. Uh, but maybe this is also a suggestion. <laughs> it's connected with the previous uh, points of um, companies being ready or not. Um, some some of the procedures can be taken out of the companies. Um, this idea was inspired in football. I've seen uh, uh, you know, on the televisions that um, some teams have restarted to train their their athletes. And um, one of the things they, they, one of the rules they created was the athletes come already uh, with their their garments for training from home, and when the training ends, they go home directly with those uh, garments. They don't have the bus within the club. Maybe uh, it's easier for for smaller companies not have to um, worry about the. Uh, the bus, um, the, the the cleaning. Not, I, I'm not saying about the water closet, but uh, about the large uh, facilities for for um, hygiene. Okay, that's very good. Uh, just you, just for not forgetting. Sorry, Karel. So I I think it will be wonderful if you contact. Those experts that you were speaking about, and look for a, a session not so far in the future. Okay, whenever they are uh, able. Okay, we should uh, be sure that. Um, I would like to propose to make a, a, a to work with Carol. I would like that, but because I think that he's really an expert on which technologies are available to make this recycling. And uh, my worry is more about the logistics in the population. So it should be great if we can share together and try to 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 define some a proposal, eh? an idea how a system can be implemented for everybody, which could be the most efficient, the cost efficient also uh, for everybody. Uh, and maybe also you can explain with the tell the different options or the different technologies. I don't know. What do you think, Carol? No, no, I much agree. Um, of course, the, the the lady I bring in is from a specific project with a from a specific uh, organization. So I don't know what the the, the stages of her development, etc. But I know they have already a textile innovation lab for for many years. So and now they turn this specifically for this purpose. Um, but I, I need to check with Pauline. Uh, it's 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 to be seen. I can also bring some people from the from specifically the circular sector, but I need to contact them to see what they are specifically doing and if it's interesting. Because just bringing them in for the sake is also not uh, recommended, of course. I, I I need to make some calls, but I will do that. And I, I don't want... sorry, I don't want to slow down the process. So if you agree, I will put in direct contact Dolores with Karel. Okay. Uh, just uh, to to not be in the middle, but we are at your disposal just to propose this session, or even you could propose to create a, a specific work group. You could um, create a message in, inviting people to join this work group, and um, I don't I don't want to uh, slow down anything. Antonio. Yes, just one moment. Dolores, do you do you want to say something? I, I just no, no. What any initiative that can help uh, to try to find solutions to this waste uh, management in general, I, I think that will be great. Uh, I, I I'm flexible to adapt or in any initiative because I just uh, worried for the problem. So I'm happy to to collaborate with mm -hmm. what you propose. Can okay. I can I add something I... here? Can I add something? Can I suggest that on, on top of in considering the recycling part, uh, there's the reducing part of it, side of it, because, in, for instance, with the mask, everybody is considering the FFP2 or the Kruger masks, but the hygienic, hygienic masks are normally uh, reusable. They, they can, you can wash them like any times. So in, in top of considering the recycling part of, of, the, of the story, I, I think that we can also think on ways on to how to reduce the, the the equipments that they have, because I don't think we are thinking enough on that. 
we are trying to move companies to see if, if the hygienic masks are, are safe enough to use the hygienic masks as long as the, the administrations uh, approve so. But if the administration says it's safe enough for a company environment, for them to use uh, hygienic masks instead of uh, sanitary masks and re reuse them. You are right, Carla, but you need to think about that uh, the, this reusability is limited. Uh, already there is published for the Ministerio here in Spain that I think that maximum it's five washing times only. That's okay, yeah, that's already a lot, but uh, it's not indefinitely reusable. Yeah, totally. It's still better than yeah. two masks for every day. <laughs> It's, 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 it really depends on, on the use of, of the mask in what kind of circumstance, because also from the reusable ones, you have now some with replace, uh, replacement filters, etc. So uh, much more applications are, are coming in. But it, it really depends on where do you need it for. If it's going to the supermarket uh, or being uh, constantly with, with five people in one room, that's, that's of course completely different, uh, let alone the, the more medical applications. So, um, but we we should really figure out what is the most appropriate type for which level, uh, what can be reused and what can be discarded in a, in a, in a quite <laughs> decent way and not uh, uh, just uh, burned or something. <laughs> uh, perhaps there can be implemented a regulation for ta uh, tagging those uh, items with some kind of information about that. Mm, and, and some mark maybe, uh, for instance, when we are speaking about uh, the danger of fire, you, we know that there is the, the red, the orange, the yellow. So maybe those, um, after being rewashed, they can be marked as uh, uh, green when they still have a lot of, of reusage uh, possibilities and uh, like orange when they only have one or something like that. Okay, more questions. Can I speak now, Antonio? This. Well, uh, just, yeah, thank you. Just to say that um, in Portugal, they started a project looking at um, COVID in the wasted uh, waters. Uh, in a way, because, and this raises a problem when we wash the materials, what happens with the, if the, those materials are contaminated and go into the wasted waters. And uh, so uh, the project aims to uh, identify that and also at the same time to see uh, where are, to anticipate a little bit the appearance again of, uh, of uh, some uh, propagation of the virus among the population. So this means that uh, besides uh, this possibility of washing maybe is, is also important to know uh, how to what, how to uh, clean that material? What type of um, I don't know temperature or whatever in order to destroy uh, the things? Okay, I think that uh, it's time uh, to to close. I don't know if that's what Karel is meaning with the yeah uh, with the signs. Okay. No, no, 60 degrees. <laughs> ah, 60 degrees, okay. I think the, the WHO recommends to wash at least on 60 degrees and then the virus uh, cannot survive. Okay, so the, the water should be clean after that. that uh, the after washing for 60 degrees, yes. But yeah. therefore, we need maybe a bit more scientists and, and experts on board. I, I don't want to, <laughs> to launch cowboy yeah. stories or whatever. But even even when we wash our hands, uh, if we wash our hands and we do it for saving ourselves from potential contamination, that means that uh, if we have those potential contamination on our hands and we just wash our hands, the water will keep that, and we don't wash our hands at six degrees. So this this is really a, a dangerous thing if the virus goes on the water and, and gets out again. Thank you. Uh, Antonio. I'm Xavier, if I can speak. Do it. Please. Thank you. I'm from the, the water sector. And I have um, a question for, for Alberto, because we are now working to identify the, the, the virus, the COVID-19, in the, in the wastewater for, for the cities with uh, 
uh, with more population infected. And we are now working in the idea to apply uh, all the knowledge uh, we have about the, the identification of the virus in the wastewater uh, to, for example, factories. Uh, maybe in the in the in the case of some companies, as Alberto ha has told, probably don't have the the resource to have a test uh, every day to to all the workers. For example, it's it's impossible. But uh, maybe if if you can identify in the in the wastewater uh, if the has somebody infected, maybe you can promote this kind of test. No, it's a it's a way to to have a a fast uh, test to identify if somebody are infected in a small uh, population. No, it's uh, we are um, we are working now in this kind of idea, uh, but but probably one of the problems is uh, have uh, uh, take samples of the of the uh, of the place where uh, could be people infected and and also uh, uh, promote uh, all the all the all the research. To apply this in midterm, it's not a solution for a for a short term because we are now working in, in research. But uh, we, I think, we, we could be interesting maybe for for not I don't know if if uh, Noah dies or maybe for the next uh, um, next uh, pandemic or virus in the future. I don't know if it is this could be interesting for for Thiaga or other clusters with uh, big companies to have their own. Uh, which water plan? No, it's a case of uh, some big factories as uh, food sector or or auto. And and it is anonymous. Yes, I, because I uh, we can identify exactly who are infected, but uh, it's a way to if 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 we we are working now in the in the idea of the free COVID nineteen factories. This is a way to to try to. To have some trust to the workers, no, uh, nobody are infected because the, the wastewater are, is, is is okay. Um, but well, uh, if 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 it's possible, uh, everybody go to the to the toilet, no, uh, every day to have the the, the comprobation or the, the validation. It's only an idea, but I think it's maybe something interesting to to work with the the, the big factories of the of the clusters. So thank you, thank you for the idea. I think well, I am not an expert in in biological uh, pathogens, and uh, I, I don't know. Uh, what I think uh, is that our work work uh, place is COVID free. I mean, we will do uh, all all the measures in our hand to avoid people infected uh, inside our factories. So it's a um, it's a matter of uh, as Vasco said before, of controlling the temperature of the people, and there are some difficulties with with it, but uh, we will do it. Um, it's, a, um, it's a matter also of self re responsible of people that they have to fulfill. Uh, I mean, uh, some papers uh, that they have to 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 take the to take the, then. Um, the temperature before attending to work and saying that they are okay before before attending to work. Um, well, we 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 will have we will have all of our workers will have will have a mask, so they will they won't they won't infect any, anyone. Um, they won't. They well, Vasco said uh, some recommendations about the restaurants. I mean, of 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 of, of the factories. In our case, uh, Spain is, is the situation is much worse than in Portugal. So we directly we close our our restaurants. We call, we 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 will um, forbid the people to take showers. I mean, and to use the the common areas uh, completely. And they will have to to have their their they mean the the sandwich uh, in the not in the common areas, just in the in the in the in the, uh, in the work uh, place. So uh, our our measures will be uh, much more restrictive because our situation. I mean, Spain, Italy, UK, right now, US is different than, than Portugal and, 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 and other places. So, um, as I as I thought regarding your question, I thought that the soap uh, the the uh, washing your hands was was enough, and, and in my, I thought that the the the, 
the hydroalcohol alcohol will kill the the virus. And that's what I thought. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's, 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 it's a good idea. Uh, but maybe maybe it's better to start with the with the um, sanitary. I mean, with the hospitals and. Uh, at least in Spain, it is said that 20% of the of the medical of the medical people they are they are, they are infected. So we think that in our factories there is not there is not a, such such an infection. But it is maybe to control the quality of the water we could be also an idea to, to I don't know like like a measure of of a, 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 a epidemiological control. Something like that. So we, we are be, open. We are, we are open could, to, to that uh, to that idea. It could be one of the uh, measures to give the blue flag, COVID-free yes. flag. Yeah. Yes. Yes. It could. Yes. yes it could be. Yes. It's, it could be an objective uh, testing. I can. I like. Something. I like. I, I like the idea, Xavi. Xavier Amores. I can. Add, yeah. Yeah. I, I just want to mention something for Xavier. Uh, but I, while you are talking, I'm just looking for some uh, uh, paper, uh, scientific paper in ResearchGate, and there are already some studies uh, how the the coronavirus, not this one specific, but from 2008, there is already some articles explaining how coronavirus can survive in water, and depending on the temperature of the water. This is the first thing I can. Yes, send yes, to you, uh, so as we know, uh, I cooperate uh, with the, 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 the big research center of, of water. It's a, it's a center who has the, the, the mission to, to analyze the wastewater of the, the main cities in, in Catalonia, for example, Igualada, who are uh, a percentage of people infected uh, so, so high. And in the wastewater, it's, it's possible to identify the, 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 the virus. Uh, and and that's the, the reason because we are thinking about the 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 using this uh, identification of the, the virus in the wastewater plants uh, to apply in other contexts, no, for example, factories or I don't know. Uh, but it, in it is is a is a way to to in, we are thinking how it's possible to identify new pandemias before uh, before the the people has. Uh, uh, the, the opportunity to make tests, for example. No, you, you can identify some in some city, analyzing the wastewater plan, uh, if the, the people who are infected are increasing. No, it's that's the, the, the reason of the research. But in my point of view, I think well, maybe we can apply also in in the in the context of the of the of the factories, no, of the free factories uh, of, of of people inf people infected. No, maybe, but it's only an idea. Okay. Uh, and Xavi, is it is it cheap this this uh, solution? I mean, is a filter or is a is something that or is a, comp a very complex? Uh... At this at this moment, the identification it's it's expensive because a lot of people have the demand of the uh, analyzing uh, with water. And it's not uh, possible in in a lot of the uh, laboratories. Uh, but well, I think it's. It's because now it's a moment where uh, a lot of demand and, and a small offer. But I think for me that the most interesting is is work in uh, innovation projects, no? Because maybe we have an ideas, we have uh, some kind sometimes technologies, but it's not easy to 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 how to apply in a concretely uh, interest, no? And but well, maybe maybe we can we can talk after Alberto with, with you and other uh, auto auto sectors or, or big factories if, if this could be interesting. Well, uh, and also I, I'm, I must talk with uh, the researchers who, who probably know better than me the, the, if uh, it is possible to apply in, in a wastewater industrial plant, no, that it's not ex the same that a wastewater plant for a city. Well, but thank you, thank you, Xavi. Uh, for for us, it, it, it will be a pleasure to 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 collaborate and to to check if, it, if this solution could be could be I mean applied to the automotive industry. And just to um, conclude, because I agree that with Xavi that this is an indicator, but Aurora also mentioned that it can be a problem. I just want to mention that okay, the virus usually are encapsulated. They have they have a protein that protect them, and. For the uh, for this reason, washing with the uh, sap sapun is really good because destroy this uh, protective layer and destroy the virus. 
So, okay, you can have traces of virus in the water, but after cleaning your hands with, uh, uh, with sapun, the virus is die. I mean, okay, you can identify as an indicator, but it's, well, should probably scientifically needs more, more, more uh, research, but uh, in general point of view, it's, it's a safety way to eliminate sure. the virus. For the one who is washing the, their hands, I, I, I really agree. Um, I'm not a scientist, but my, my worry is, is some, if, if some uh, virus will survive on the water and the waters go to, to the circulation again, um, because the, the treatment of waters is not done with, with high temperature. Um, so my, my, my question now is, is uh, to Xavier and, and to and to Alberto, um, if those documents you're speaking about, and I believe they're really rich, <laughs> if they're only in Spain or if they're they're European wide, because um, I I think the solution is is there, um, but uh, we need to spread that around, not only in Spain. I see Spain very organized, which is really needed and good. <laughs> Congratulations, but we need to, to share these this, uh, solutions. What I know is at the European level, the, the, the scientific uh, research already pub publicated in this sense is at the European level. I, I, can, I can share the, the, the paper if you want. Thank you, thank you very much. Perfect. So yes. Please share the uh, information. There is one, the best way will be through the ECCP forum. If it is uh, open information, please go to the ECCP forum and sh share it then. Uh, there, uh, it could be on the best practice, it could be on technical uh, forums, but please do that because it's the best way that uh, for everybody in, in, in Europe or in the world to be able to read it. Okay, so that's my recommendation. It's clear that we have very, very um, well-defined uh, proposals from today's session. Uh, I will, well, I, I want to remember the proposals from Alberto to create a, a blue flag, uh, free, uh, COVID-free environments for companies, um, and also to support SMEs. On, on that and to um, uh, to uh, support generally speaking the industry on on this critical moment okay and there is also a very clear proposal to work on uh, recycling and sterilizing methods not only for hospitals for sure but for general population and for the companies and that's clearly another output of uh, this session. Probably I, lo I forgot uh, a lot of them, but uh, Hilary will take care of remember me for sure, I hope. <laughs> um, Thank you, Antonio. Actually, I um, can only add uh, a key word um, that Alberto was saying, uh, trust. Uh, I, for me, it's the same. I strongly believe that is a really key word and we need that now more than ever. And uh, we have to think about how to take care about building trust. It's uh, very important. Uh, totally right. So, thank you, everybody. Um, uh, tomorrow we will meet and make a meta reflection about the group uh, works and how to improve it. Okay, you are everyone invited. And next week, remember that we have a daily meeting but also a, a very uh, wide proposed uh, meeting on by the conference on Tuesday 28 uh, half past 10 organized by the uh, European Commission with the ECCP and you are all invited to participate on it not only to watch but also to participate in the dialogue that is organized uh, at the second part of this meeting I want to be to see you there and we need to demonstrate that we are a very very dynamic and open-minded group thank you see you thank you, thank you. bye, bye.
Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. bye. Antonio. Uh -huh. eh, one question. Bueno, estamos, estamos solos ya, me parece, ¿no? 